Hello, uh, my name is Wes Thompson. Uh, I'm a professor of biostatistics at the University of California, San Diego, and I'm the uh, director of biostatistics for the uh, ABCD study uh, and an associate director of the Data Analysis and Informatics Research Center, which is also located at UCSD. So today I'm going to talk about the, um, the data exploration analysis portal, uh, or DEEP, ABCD DEEP. Uh, this is an informatics tool that the, the Data Analysis and Informatics Resource Center has uh, made available to all qualified users for the ABCD data. Um, I'm going to go through some, some background of the study first and the study design and uh, how, how it relates to the analyses um, that one might perform on the study and then show you how those are instantiated in DEEP. Um, I'll, I'll go through the slide presentation and then at the end I'll try to give a live demo of, of show you how to access DEEP and how to, how to use it. So I'll, I'll just go through some very simple examples. Uh, so the goals of the course are um, pretty straightforward. So the first is to learn some uh, pertinent details about the ABCD study design. Um, and in particular aspects of the study that are relevant for how you might uh, analyze the data from the study. Um, so that's the second goal then is to incorporate the, um, it is to think about incorporating the study design into your analyses. I'll show you a particular example using mixed effects models that controls for certain aspects of nesting in the study. Um, but there's other, there's other aspects that you might consider going forward, which I'll try to uh, touch on briefly. Uh, and then, uh, and then the last goal is to learn how to access and, um, the data from Deep. Um, uh, I'll show you how to download the data, and also how to perform analyses and to explore the data set in Deep as well. Uh, so, so what is Deep? Uh, so again, Deep stands for Data Exploration and Analysis Portal. It's it's a web-based interface um, deploy, deployed on the cloud. Um, it's actually hosted by the, um, by the NDA, the, the NIMH Data Archive. Uh, so that's where you will, if you register and access the ABCD data, that's where you access the data. Um, and you access deep um, in, in the same place where you access the data. I'll, I'll show you in the live demo exactly where to go. Um, it has a, a number of different tools built in. Uh, for example, it has um, uh, multi-level uh, analyses that incorporate covariates, uh, design um, covariates, um, random effects for uh, site and subject uh, and family. Uh, I'll, I'll go over why that's important potentially. And then it also has some visualizations uh, for the data, uh, interactive tools for exploring the data, and uh, the outputs, um, including uh, diagnostic plots and, and, uh, and model fits and so forth. And all, the, all this is shareable and downloadable and uh, um, is intended to kind of lower the activation energy for people who are perhaps uh, new to DEEP or, or uh, sort of new to ABCD or don't have a lot of experience analyzing uh, data sets from you know, um, using multi-level models. So, so the idea is we want to try to make this as easy as possible for people to get started to, to work with the data. Uh, so before we get to deep, um, I want to um, point out some aspect of, uh, of, of how the DARC has tried to uh, incorporate open science into its uh, uh, um, ethic. Uh, one thing that we've done is uh, put all of our source code on GitHub. So if you just do a Google search for ABCD GitHub, uh, it'll, it'll be the first thing that shows up. Uh, all of the code that the DRC has used to process data uh, and to create deep uh, and to do a lot of different things, including um, uh, geocoding, um, how, how the, the EPRIME files for the, the fMRI, a uh, number of different things, including the source code for Deep itself. So, if you wanted to make it uh, to take Deep and implement something, uh, implement it on a different study, you, the the code's there. You can go ahead and you know play with it. Uh, so, so the um, the I think this is an important part of the um, the ethic of ABCD is that is open science. 
Um, we we want to make sure that everything that we, we do is, is uh, out there for people to see and is reproducible and is something that people can um, take and, and uh, understand and there shouldn't be any mystery. Everything should be reproducible and, and uh, it, you know, it's, there, there shouldn't be anything hidden in ABCD. Uh, in fact, one of the things that we've been mandated by the NIH is that nobody can publish on anything in ABCD that's not publicly available to everybody. So including anybody inside the consortium. So, so there's no data that we have inside the consortium that we can publish on that's not available for everybody, anybody who can access the data outside the consortium as well. And I, I, I feel like that's an important aspect of ABCD that um, we've really bought into and we're really trying to make sure we live up to that ethic. And, uh, um, and DEEP is really our, one, of our, one of the things we've tried to implement to really uh, live up to that, to, to that standard, the open science standard. Reproducibility is super important. Uh, there's no, there's nothing you should do in a paper with the ABCD data that anybody else with access to ABCD data shouldn't be able to replicate exactly. So if they have access to exactly the same data, there, there shouldn't be any mystery. Uh, whatever you publish on or um, show in a, in a talk, is some, you should be able to make this code available on GitHub or some other place and, and make it available for other people to exactly reproduce what you've done. I think that's true open science. So there's a number of other things here. I'm not gonna go into detail, um, but uh, um, so for example, uh, just one example is um, I published a paper uh, in 2018 on, uh, it's just, it was a, you know, just a PCA of the neurocognitive measures in ABCD. Uh, and I, I, I wrote the paper in our markdown and I, I, I didn't hard code any numbers. I, I basically had the numbers uh, read in dynamically from the, from the R outputs. And I made all of this, um, all the R code and the R markdown file available in, in ABCD GitHub. So if anybody wants to reproduce it in my paper, they can just get that R markdown file, run the, run the um, R code uh, on the 2.0.1 release, it should give you exactly the same numbers I got, um, and uh, and it reads it directly into the paper. And so you should be able to re reproduce my paper by clicking a button and, and compiling the R markdown file. So so I tried to make that as reproducible as I possibly could. And I strongly encourage all of you to uh, make your code available uh, when you write papers with ABC data. Also. Um, so I'm going to cover a little bit about the design of ABCD because it's important to understand the, some basic aspects. I'm not going to go through every single measure we're collecting. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, specifically, uh, 65,854 measures per person uh, in the baseline visit. Um, that's a lot of that is actually so. So this is called the tabulated data. These are the files that you can download directly from NDA. Um, so um, it do, does not include the the, imi the, imi the images as the tabulated imaging data, but it's not like the full images with the voxel over text level. Uh, also, does not include the genetics data. Uh, everybody, um, almost everybody at this point in ABCD has uh, whole genome genotyping data. There's also a Fitbit study. There's a, there's other kind of sources of data out there that are not part of the, the tabulated data. But the tabulated data is almost 66,000 measures per person in the baseline. Um, uh, and so um, there's a number of different domains these come from. Um, uh, this kind of organized according to work, the work groups in ABCD. There's, there's a number of work groups that specialize in certain aspects of data collection in ABCD. So for example, there's culture and environment, uh, mental health, physical health, substance use, neurocognition, mobile technology that includes the Fitbit uh, study, um, the, scan, the brain imaging scans. Um, there's what we used to call passive data, but we now we call linked external data. That includes geocoded um, environmental exposures uh, and will soon also incorporate um, school records and, and local policy information and, and um, uh, uh, very soon, hopefully, we'll also start be starting getting, get, getting other streams of data, including electronic health records. Uh, and, and the number of measures we're collecting is expanding all the time. So the 65,854 65, measures at baseline 
is going to grow. Uh, so having said that, so that's that baseline at, at year one, if you look, um, um, you know, at the year one, there's only like 5,000 measures. So, so the big difference here is, is that is the, the imaging data is collected every other year. And so a lot of these 65,000 measures are actually the tabulated data from the, uh, from the imaging. So it's like ROI level in, um, data for, uh, cortical thickness and surface area and volume and the, the MRI, the, the uh, resting state MRI and the, the task MRI and so forth. So, uh, so a lot of the, a lot of this stuff is, you know, is basically ROI level um, uh, imaging data, but there's a number, there's, there are still a number of other things that in here as well that are not imaging and, uh, and that'll be ever growing. And it's, it's a little daunting to try to navigate. I think if you, if you're not used to the study, even if you're used to, if, even if you've been involved with the study, it's, it's hard to locate variables when there's 65,000 to look through. And hopefully that's where Deep can help. Uh, so a little bit more about the study design. Uh, so we have, uh, it's a longitudinal study. Uh, so uh, it, um, here's a, kind of a snapshot of the design. So we have a uh, release year um, going on the, uh, the horizontal, the, sorry, the vertical axis here. So release year one through 14. Um, and then the, uh, the horizontal axis gives you the, the, the visit structure. So, so again, we have um, yearly in-person visits. So uh, baseline, uh, year one, year two, year three, et cetera. Uh, there's, there's interim six month visits where it's, they're not visits, the six month data collection, that's uh, um, uh, phone calls. Uh, it's a, for the, the six month um, uh, phone calls collect a very abbreviated set of measures. Uh, so, and, and so probably for the most part, when you analyze the data, you'll be focusing on the, uh, the, the yearly in-person visits. Uh, and again, the, the imaging data is collected every other year. So we have baseline year two, year four, year six, year eight, and year 10. So we should have roughly six, six imaging assessments per person by the end of the study. Uh, so again, this is a longitudinal study. Um, so it's projected to last at least 10 years, um, hoping it lasts longer, but 10 years minimum. Um, and it's uh, 12,000 kids at baseline, almost 12,000, 11,880. Um, and, uh, and so we're hoping to keep as many of them as we can in the study by, by year 10. Uh, there's, there's, so far there's minimal dropout. Um, and so if you look here on the top panel again, uh, this is basically the numbers of people with, at each visit um, for, for each release. So for example, the, the 1.0 release, the NDA 1.0 release was a little under half the, the baseline sample, so roughly 5,000 kids. Um, in the, the, the 2.0 release, uh, we had the full baseline sample, uh, and then we had some six month and some year one. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, so there's kind of a staggered structure because the data collection, the, the uh, recruitment of the kids uh, took place over a couple of years. So at, at, no, uh, yearly, so at no yearly release will we have a complete data set for all the visits. Uh, the last visit sh should roughly consist of um, you know, approximately half, you know, half the kids um, uh, at, at each release. So, so for example, uh, the 3.0 release, which is coming up, uh, imminently, uh, any, any, any week uh, should be seen. Uh, that'll have the full baseline, uh, full year one, and, uh, and, and roughly half the kids in the year two follow-up. And so, and so then we'll have two imaging time points uh, on half the sample and, and one imaging time point on the other half uh, for, for the 3.0 release. So, so this is the kind of things you kind of need to be aware of when you download the data is like, a, like you know, there's kind of, there's going to be missing data, um, you know, by not, not by design, like maybe some missing visits or some missing values for any individual person. Uh, but there's also kind of missing data by design because the, there's not going to be a full sample for every visit for every person at, at a, any given release. So, um, I just wanted to um, throw this up on the screen. This is uh, a paper that um, that the Biostatistics Workgroup just put together. That's available on BioArchive. 
Um, uh, this is something we're um, planning on submitting to a peer reviewed you know, as a peer reviewed article in the, in the coming two or three weeks. But anyway, this is something you can access right now on BioArchive. Uh, it was um, it was really geared to uh, go over the basics of the study design uh, in aspects of, pop, for example, pop, how to make population inferences with ADCD, uh, how to think about hypothesis testing and effect sizes, uh, best practices for reproducibility, uh, in in some work examples. Uh, so, so hopefully this is. Um, Something that you can find useful. Uh, this is this is the the reading material that I'm submitting along with this class. Uh, so um, so hopefully there's some information here that you find useful for for learning about the the study design and uh, and what we consider to be best practices for analyses and presentation of your results. So deep. Um, so I want to get into uh, the portal itself. So I'm just going to go through uh, basic. Um, the, the basic aspects and slides. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna go through and do a, a little bit of a live demo. Uh, so, so this is the, the, um, the, the opening screen that you'll see when you first log in. Um, and it's got several modules. Uh, it's got information in the getting started page. Uh, there's a, a plan page, which I'll go into a little bit detail. Uh, Explorer, which I find super useful. That's something that I use all the time because, uh, again, like with 65,000 variables, it's hard, it's hard to figure out what's going on. And so we've tried to build in some uh, functionality to help you explore the data set. Uh, limit and extend, I'm not going to go into as much detail. Uh, I'll just kind of briefly mention it. And then, uh, um, but then I'll spend a little bit more time on analyze. And analyze is uh, the kind of the main uh, module for, for doing analyses using uh, mixed specs models and uh, using R code. And I'll show you that, an example of that in detail. So explore, uh, so, so this, this basically exploits an ontology that we've put together for the, for the study. So, we, so we've put all the variables into a hierarchical ontology um, based on uh, the, work, the work group structure that I mentioned before. So again, uh, we have uh, culture and environment, uh, imaging, mental and physical health, neurocognition, and uh, so on and so forth. And so we've kind of organized the data into these. Uh, um, but, uh, we've got special names in DEEP that, that they're, they're not the same as the names in NDA. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence, and we have the map between them. Uh, but, uh, uh, but we decided that in DEEP, we wanted to have a more explorable um, way of naming the variables. And so we did that using an ontology, using a prefix structure. And so, so I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit more detail. Uh, so on the left side, there's a tree. You just click on the nodes, and it opens up the leaves, and you can uh, um, interactively look for variables uh, that way, um, uh, organized according to the ontology. Uh, when you when you click on one of these nodes, it copies the information over to the right, uh, and, it, and, it, and and here we have um, a way to kind of click on it, and and when you click on the variable, it'll uh, it'll show you the in, the data dictionary information. Um, it'll show you a histogram for continuous variables. It'll show you uh, um, the, tab, the cross tabs for the, uh, the, uh, the, the percentage breakdown for the for categorical variables. Um, and there's also kind of a kind of a Google-like functionality for searching for variables in the, in the bar here. So it's kind of interactive between the left side and the right side, uh, whichever you prefer. Um, so limit, I'm just going to talk about briefly. And, and so this is a way to essentially limit the data set that you want to analyze. So for example, um, if you wanted to look at, say, here, here, here's uh, sex equals F. So if you wanted to look at females only, uh, females only analysis, it would basically um, find all of the females in the study and you know, put them into a collection. And then you could save that and then you could, and then when you do analyze, you can actually analyze the, the data set, uh, um, which is a subset according to your specifications. I'll, brief, I'll briefly show how to do that in the uh, in the, uh, the deep the live demo. Um, there's also extend. Uh, extend is a way to create new variables using the the existing variables. So, so an example might be uh, say if you wanted to compute the body mass index based on height and uh, weight. Uh, and so there's a way to interactively create variables. You can also upload your own variables. So this is, there's a, a link here for for um, being able to upload. 
maybe some some variable you've computed yourself that you want to add into your analysis. Uh, you can say you can save the these extend variables and then they'll, they'll be incorporated. They can be incorporated into your into the analyze uh, module. So again, I'll just go over that briefly when we do the live demo. In the um, analyze uh, module, uh, which is where I'll spend the most time on the demo, uh, we've implemented a mixed effects model. Uh, all the code in the analyze is, is implemented in R, um, which you can access to your expert mode. Uh, and what we've done is take the, the GAM4 um, library uh, and implemented a mixed effects model uh, that incorporates, um, uh, so, so here we have it for uh, site random effects and, um, and family random effects. So uh, we also currently have, have subject random effects because now there's like repeated measures uh, on subjects. So now we allow actually for three, three levels of nesting in, in the data within subject, uh, within family, and within site. Uh, and just a note about, so site, there's, there's 20, 21 different sites in ABCD, uh, and so we have we want to tr probably try to account for some some variable in your analysis or some way of accounting for the site variation. Uh, you can do that via a random or a fixed effect. Here we have it as a random effect. Um, you could also just do a fixed effect if you wanted to. Uh, family, uh, family, you probably uh, have to use a random effect because there's there's um, there's thousands of families in in ABCD. So so there's a um, a lot of twins, for example. Um, four of the sites are twin hub sites that, that intentionally collected twins to do behavior genetics analyses. Um, so I think there's about 1,200 twin pairs or so. Uh, but there's also other family members in the study, like uh, just SIBs that happen to be in the study together. So I think there's on the order of roughly 4,000 4, of the kids are within a family that has more than one member. In, uh, in in the study, so if, if I remember correctly, but it, it's it's a considerable number, and so you need to account for that in your degrees of freedom uh, when you're when you're doing say a regression analysis, uh, and so one way to do that is via random effects, and so this is the way we have it implemented and analyzed. Uh, you can do it, and you know, and there's other ways of doing. It. You can use like the generalized estimating equations approach um, or uh, you could try to randomly select one member of each group. Uh, that's kind of a little bit wasteful, but sometimes you have to do something like that if you have a method that doesn't allow for, for nesting. Um, but, uh, but in any case, the, uh, um, the, the especially uh, site and family are things that you need to, the aspects of the design that you should account for in your analyses. Um, and then of course, with longitudinal data, uh, so we have a little bit already in the T.0.1 release, uh, and then in the 3.0 release, which is coming out in a couple of weeks, um, or hopefully in a couple of weeks, uh, that there'll be there'll be um, at least two time points for imaging. Uh, there'll there'll be two time points for imaging for roughly half the subjects, uh, and there'll be a number of other variables that have two or three time points because now then we'll, they'll they'll be baseline year one and year two follow up data for for some variables. So so then you have to account for nesting within su uh, within subject across time, right? So. So that could be accounted for via a random, a random subject effect, uh, as an, for example. And that's what we have implemented in Beep. Uh, and the, the one of the nice things about the GAMs is that they allow for non-normal uh, non distributions, ex other exponential family, like logistic regression or Poisson regression. Um, there, uh, having said that, the, um, there, there, there are Potentially some issues with convergence if you use nonlinear link functions for like we have the logistic link, link function implemented in deep and a number of people have reported to us that there's issues with convergence of the models sometimes the random effects models with the logistic link function and so I think in uh, uh, very soon after the 3.0 data releases we're going to kind of switch over to the generalized estimating equation approach because that seems to be a little bit more stable for the, for these nonlinear link functions so that's something we'll be um, addressing in the upcoming version of the deep and hopefully in a couple months. Uh, so when you, when you um, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I want to go to the live demo soon, uh, but this is the, where you um, uh, can enter your, your regression variables. You have your independent variable of interest, uh, the main independent variable, uh, your dependent variable of interest. Uh, you can have uh, other covariates, um, including uh, interactions or transformations of these, uh, and then 
we have uh, set a, a number of um, uh, coverts that we recommend people consider including in the analysis. And, and the reason why is because they're actually part of the design of the study. So, so if you're not familiar with how ABCD was, um, how the subjects were recruited, I'll just go over that briefly. Uh, so so the, uh, the primary form of recruitment was through schools. Uh, so there's a random selection of schools in each of the 21 uh, catchment areas. Uh, and it was designed to try to reflect the population of the catchment area of, of the United States within those catchment areas. Uh, so it's, it's truly a population-based study. Uh, and so it, it was designed to uh, kind of um, match with the American Community Survey, which is a very large uh, census-based survey of uh, nine and ten, that, of, and we looked at the nine and ten year olds in that survey and tried to match the ABCD sampling with respect to race, ethnicity, um, sex, uh, education, ed education level of the family, uh, income, marital status, um, and a couple other variables. But um, but I think those are the primary ones. So so those we put in as default covariates in for analyses uh, you can click off them you don't have to put in there and in general we don't recommend that you just default to a given set of coverts that you think carefully about what coverts you want to put in your models uh, the paper that i that the reading material the meaningful effects paper uh, has a lengthy discussion about this and a couple of examples uh, um, but we wanted to just like kind of put these in here not not saying that you should always put them in your analysis, but just to strongly consider putting them in your analysis. And if I mean, if you think they're not appropriate, that's fine. Uh, but they are part of the design of ABCD, and so we, we have that kind of coded in here as something to think about. Uh, we also have um, random effects, like I said, of site and family, and now we also have um, subject for, for longitudinal data. Uh, and, and those are kind of hard coded in because I um, we just thought there's we couldn't think of an example where you wouldn't want to try to control for that uh, in a basic analysis. So, so we, we, we kind of hard code those in our, in our model. Having said that, this is, like I said, all this code is available in R. You can download it, you can modify it as you see fit. If you wanted to, for some reason, take these out, you could, um, but I think you should think carefully. Uh, and just a quick note, um, the site and family random effect. So, so there is variation in the study due to site and the variation in the study due to family. In general, the, the variation due to family is Quite a bit more substantial than the variation due to site. So maybe on the order of 10 times as much variation as accounted for by family than, than by site. So, um, so it's, I think it's quite important to have a family random effect or, or somehow control for family in your analysis. Uh, site too, um, but again family, family is particularly important and it's, it's some, not something you could address via a fixed effect, whereas site you could potentially put in as a, a fixed effect if you really wanted to. Um, you could also like anyway. I'll, I'll get to that in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, is a, in a more extensive detail when I should go go through the live demo. Um, so there's some outputs which I'm not going to get into here because I'll show you the live demo. Um, some regression scatter plot and regression model fits. Um, uh, some displays of the data. Some uh, diagnostic plots uh, in the, you know, the, the a table of coefficients and, uh, and p values and so forth. Um, so there's a tutorial mode in Deep, uh, which again I'll show you. So you just click on a button, and that opens up a, a text that describes each of the each of the um, inputs and outputs in the in Analyze, and gives you some intuition as to what 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 they what they're doing and and how to interpret them. Um, there's also expert mode, which I'll show you show you in a second as well. Uh, when you click on expert mode, the R code opens up, and you can go in and you can actually edit and modify the R code and and run run your run your analyses tailored to your to your specifications. And you can, of course, like I said, you can download everything and run it locally and do whatever you want with it too. Um, here's the screen where I'll, uh, where you input the variables. I'm not going to go into this because again, I'm going to give a live demo in a second. Uh, so let me actually just go to I'm just skip the model builder. All right, so um, uh, before I actually go through the live demo, um, I want to go through some of the updates that we're gonna that are coming down the pike. Some of them actually are are, are actually ready to go. 
In fact, we're probably going to re release uh, some of these um, next uh, this coming week. Um, uh, so, for example, population weighting. Uh, so, so even though the the um, ABCD was designed to match the American Community Survey in terms of socio these uh, key socio-demographic variables. Um, because of self-selection in the study, we don't match it exactly in, in some cases. And so we've, uh, Steve, with Steve Herringa at the University of Michigan, we've created uh, weights that weight our study to the, to the American Community Survey. And so you can try to get your analyses to, to match more closely to the population of the United States, you know, of the population of nine and 10 year olds. Um, uh, and, 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 so, and so that's something that's been implemented and then we'll be ready in a week or two. Um, uh, we have an enhanced interactive download of data that's actually going to also be available in a week or two. Um, so so it's, it, it kind of interacts with Explore so you can put in your variables in a cart and then download um, sub, some samples of the data in whatever format you want, like a, like an, like a CSV file or an RDS file or a SAS file or whatever. Um, so the image analyses is also something that will be implemented uh, at least partly in, in a couple of weeks as well. It, it'll be implemented in the ROI level. Uh, and this is something that we're gonna extend to the voxel and Protex level um, uh, in the coming months. Uh, so, the, so the first three here are, are, are gonna be implemented in, in a couple of weeks. So probably by the time you see this lecture, they'll be implemented and available on NDA Deep. Um, Once tune analyses, uh, so so that's going to be after 3.0 because we don't currently have a lot of longitudinal data. I mean, like I said, we, we have a random random effect for subject already implemented, uh, but we're going to kind of extend some of the functionality of Deep to account for more kind of thinking about trajectories. Uh, even though it's still a little preliminary, with like 3.0, we'll have um, like two or at most three time points for for a lot of variables. So it's not like really extensive trajectories yet, but at some point they will be. You know, when we go out to year ten, we'll have a lot of we'll have a lot of time points for for every subject. Uh, and so we're going to have more like spaghetti plots and and ways to do um, uh, mixed flex models that maybe look at like time lag structure or change or or whatnot. Uh, so so there'll be a lot of things we have to implement with the longitudinal data because the number of analyses you can do with longitudinal data is is becomes uh, combinatorically larger as you get more and more time points. Um, uh, one thing we're actually working on, this will be available for the 3.0 release, uh, after the 3.0 release is the twin, twin analyses. So, so you can look at um, heritability um, in, with twins. That was the point of, uh, one of the points of, of getting them in the sample. Uh, so you can, uh, you can use behavior genetics analyses, uh, actually as implemented in OpenMX, which is an R package. And so we're working on getting the, this OpenMX implemented in Deep as well. And there you can look at um, uh, genetic, unique, and common environmental sources of variation and decompose the, the, uh, every measure into, the, into those sources of variation. Uh, you can do that univariately or bivariately, and there's, there's a lot of different um, things you can do with twin data that, that I think are pretty cool. Uh, and then we're, we're also working on getting kind of more um, more advanced machine learning uh, methods implemented, um, and, and also like cross validation and out of sample estimation of effect sizes. Um, that's something we're actively working on right now. And then another thing is missing data imputation. Uh, that's something that we'll have to deal with more and more as we get more and more time points. We'll have we'll have uh, missing missing covariates and independent variables, um, and we'll either have to do list-wise deletion, which is not optimal, or you know, hope, and so so we're going to try to implement some kind of multiple imputation at some point on deep. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop the slideshow. Okay, and then I'm going to now switch to the live demo. So bear with me for a couple of minutes. I'm just going to bring up my browser. Okay, let me just go to Google. All right, so now I'm just going to share my screen again. Okay, so I'm just gonna take you through how to access Steep uh, and then uh, just some uh, basic examples of using the different modules. So the best way to find it is just to type in ABCD Deep. Uh, it'll take you straight there. Uh, here, I'll just go to this one because 
this is to show you where you can access. This is where you actually access the data as well. So this is the, the now I'm at the uh, NIMH data archive, the NDA um, data repository for ABCD. Uh, and so this is where you access all your collections. Um, um, and you can also access deep here with this button. Uh, the, the way to access it is so once, once you've gone through and you've gotten the permissions to use the data, to download the data, uh, then you'll have a username and a password. Use the same username and password to access DEEP that you use to access the data. Um, uh, and just before I get into um, to DEEP, the RDS file, so that's a, a R data format. Uh, the RDS file that, um, that kind of powers DEEP is also available for direct download. Um, and and this, this is the, essentially, this RDS file has everything in the, the full release here. Uh, the advantage to downloading the RDS file as opposed to going is to downloading these uh, um, these text files directly is that there's a, these are um, if you download all the, the, the text files directly from the um, from the, the annual release I think there's dozens of them uh, they're split up um, they're all in uh, character format uh, when you analyze it you'll have to merge them and you'll have to to transform the data types to whatever you know the correct data type before you do your analysis. Uh, if you want to avoid doing that, just download the RDS file. We've already done all that for you. It's all of the variables that are available in 2.0.1 are available in the RDS file. Um, we sometimes we sometimes add in a few extra things uh, that are that are um, variables that are that are processed from the existing data. Um, but like we go through a substantial amount of work to get them in there uh, into deep um, and that kind of saves you the work for uh, doing you know doing that processing yourself um, but I, I just want to emphasize the RDS file contains the same data as the 2.0 release it is the 2.0 release or the 2.0.1 release but we've processed it we've merged it we've created that we've switched it to the right data types and then we've, we've um, in some cases, we've like taken some of the variables in there and created new variables that are related related to the existing ones that you know that might be effortful for people to do from scratch. And um, and I also want to point out that the code for doing this is available on ABCD GitHub, so you can see exactly how the steps we went through to create the RDS file from the existing 2.0.1 data. Uh, so. Uh, all right, so so you can download the data directly. Um, it's, uh, again, it's an RDS file. Um, if you if you read into R, you can export it to whatever format you want. Um, uh, also, we have, like I said, in the in the version that's coming out in a week or two of Deep, we'll have added functionality for interactive um, download of data into whatever format you want. So watch this Deep. So this is where you put in your um, your NDA username and password, and it takes you here. So here's the, uh, the entry screen. Uh, so the um, the getting started is uh, just kind of some basic information um, about the study, um, about the data, about the different modules, um, how to cite deep, uh, and so forth. Um, so if we go home, uh, here we have a list of recent updates. Uh, this tells you the like the different um, features that we've been adding. Um, so uh, uh, here's a uh, oh uh, maybe this has already been updated. Okay, so um, so we'll see. So uh, so so this, this gives you a list of the the things that we've uh, currently added to the um, to the uh, so. So yeah, yeah, August 17th. So maybe this is, uh, so maybe I can show the ROI analysis. Um, so, so the, uh, and then uh, let me go to plan. Uh, so, so plan is something we put in here to encourage people to, to consider doing hypothesis registration. So, uh, so it talk, again, it talks about um, the sampling, uh, the design, the analysis, and the analysis scripts, uh, which are things that you wanna share. Um, and then um, uh, give some details um, for the, the design and some references, some relevant references for ABCD for the design, uh, some for, for recommended analyses. Um, 
uh, for how, where to share your scripts, uh, and then also for hypothesis registration. And so one of the one of the places you can go to for hypothesis registration is the uh, Open Science Foundation OSF. Uh, and so we've created an OSF uh, template. And so if you wanted to use this as a template and to modify it for your particular analysis and then to submit that for OSF, you can then um, pre-register your hypotheses in your analysis plan. Um, there are a number of journals that take uh, registered reports as an option. Uh, we've, we've partnered with two journals to do this. So uh, Cerebral Cortex and the Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience are two journals that have specific uh, options for doing registered reports for, uh, for ABCD data. So, uh, so and, and if you have an interest in this uh, and have never done it before, I think this is new for a lot of people, but, um, but it's something we've been trying to encourage is at least to think about for an option. Uh, please send me an email and I'll be happy to, to, um, to give you more information and to let you know um, like how the, uh, a little bit more detail how the registry reports works uh, uh, and, uh, and, and point you to the resources that are available, including the two journals that I just mentioned. And so here's the template. And uh, so now if we go back home. Okay, so let me go to the explore function. Um, this I find quite useful. Uh, so, so there's a, um, again, this is based on the ontology that we've put together, the DRCs put together. Uh, so, uh, substudy. So, there's not a lot of substudies right now. There's the Irma substudy, but there's a lot more substudies coming down the pike. Uh, so, so this is uh, um, these are um, kind of subsets of data in ABCD that have been collected uh, um, that weren't part of the original design. So for example, the Irma substudy was like after Hurricane Irma, um, uh, there was a desire amongst some of the investigators to collect information about the effects of Irma and the exposure to Irma on the, on the particular like the, the Florida site. Um, and so, so that became a substudy. And, and there's a number of other substudies that are coming down uh, soon as well. And so they would be here in the substudy leaf. Uh, main study is where most of it is, of course. And so um, we currently have it um, uh, divided up into, into these uh, categories. And, uh, and again, like I said before, these are based, a lot of this is based on the work group structure of, of ABCD, of the ABCD consortium in terms of how, how we organize um, data collection um, by, by um, experts in each of these areas that, um, that are kind of in charge for uh, determining which of these measures should go into ABCD and, and to QC the measures and uh, so on and so forth. So we have uh, biospecimens, uh, that includes hair samples, and, uh, um, and uh, soon it'll be blood samples, uh, uh, for, um, and there's, uh, uh, say, hormones uh, and some other measures. Uh, so you can see here. Uh, this is probably going to grow over time. Uh, we just started collecting blood before the COVID pandemic, uh, so you know, hopefully we'll be able to get that going again at some point, and then that'll that'll lead to a number of other biosamples. Uh, culture and environment, uh, demographics, um, core demographics, and uh, um, and and uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of other ones. So uh, let's see, let's, let's look at core demographics. So these, these are the ones that I mentioned before. This is like the ones that were, um, a lot of these are part of the study design, like uh, um, household education, household income, age, marital status, uh, race, ethnicity, so on and so forth. Um, so there's the imaging roles, I'm not gonna click on that. Uh, mental health, um, neurocognition, there's the NIH toolbox and a few others, uh, mm -hmm. novel tech, Let's see what's in Novel Tech. Oh, a screen, screen time and Fitbit. So there's the Fitbit study that I mentioned. So that each of the kids gets a, um, a Fitbit and wears it for a couple of weeks. And we're making summaries of those data available here. Uh, screen time. So how much like uh, the, kid, the, the children are asked uh, how often they spend on the screen and various activities like gaming and social media and so forth. Uh, so and there's physical health. So residential history drive um, uh, geolocation scores, these are um, 
one of the things that we've done is to um, take everybody's address in ABCD and geocode it with latitude and longitude. And then we can link that up to a number of different data sources. So, um, so for example, if we look at current address one, here's all the different variables. By the way, every time I do this, you can see it copies it over on the right side. I'll show you how to, to kind of interact with that in a second. Uh, and so there's a number of variables uh, that we've linked to where this is actually a very active thing. Uh, we have a, we actually have a geolocation work group, um, which I'm co-chair of, uh, that we, we're trying to link to a lot more, uh, expo like environmental neighborhood level, environmental exposures, like pollution, water pollution, air pollution, um, uh, crime rates. Uh, we have the neighborhood the area deprivation index. We'll, we'll, we'll have a, uh, uh, hopefully a lot more of these variables coming down the pike. Um, uh, we're also going to try to get uh, residential history in a lot more detail uh, going forward. Um, we are actually getting the residential history. We're trying to get it back to birth uh, and then proactively going forward. And then so we'll have a kind of a dynamic um, um, uh, set of exposures that are geocoded using residential history. Uh, so this is, this is kind of an uh, interest, I think, interesting and in, in, in expanding uh, area that we're going to try to make sure we, we get a lot more information for ABCD. Um, make sure your questionnaire isn't so useful potentially. And then the substance use. So there's a lot of uh, different substance use measures in ABCD. Uh, so a ABCD is, is not just, but is predominantly funded by NIDA, National Institute of Drug Abuse. And so one of the primary interests of, uh, of the funders for ABCD was the impact of drug exposures on health and mental health and, and trajectories of brain and neurocognitive development. So we have a number of uh, variables in those domains. So if I look in a little bit more detail, uh, so for example, neurocognition, now let's go there. Uh, so here's the different tasks. Um, so we have, uh, so say let's get uh, NIH toolbox. Okay, so there's a number of variables that, that you get out of that. Uh, so again, now all of these are now copied over to the, to the right-hand side here. I could actually actively search for things in this toolbar here if I wanted to. Um, so, uh, so, but let's take an example of one of them. So let's look at, say, NIH toolbox, the picture vocabulary uh, age corrected. And if I click on that, um, it opens up a, um, uh, it opens up a histogram that, that it gives you the, the NDA name. So this is, a, this is again, this is, this, this is our deep name with the prefix structure that, that, has, that kind of obeys this ontology that we've put together to make it easier to search. Um, but we also tell you what the, uh, what the NDA, the official NDA name is. Uh, for these continuous variables, it opens up a histogram in a five number summary of the data. So you can kind of get a sense for, for what's in there and what it looks like. Um, and then for uh, discrete variables, let me see if I can find a discrete variable. So here's like language that's gotta be discrete. So we have, uh, say, uh, we have uh, English 11,719, uh, blank 154, and NA is 15,495. So, so, the, um, so essentially, uh, this is all English. Uh, we have missing data for 154, and then this is due to the, um, uh, this is something we actually have, uh, we're going to um, parse out a little bit more detail in the next version of DEEP is like the reason why there's so many NAs is because uh, this was data that was collected at baseline. And so the missing data is, is just data that, that is like post baseline, like six months, uh, year one follow up and so forth. So, so, um, so again, we have to be cognizant of the fact that this is a longitudinal study and there's a structure to the data. Um, so, so we're, we're, we're going to, as we, as we, um, as the study progresses and becomes more and more longitudinal, uh, we'll have to morph deep to be able to handle, um, you know, in, uh, in a better way, but how, how the, like kind of the visit structure, we're already, we're, we've already made some progress on that. So hopefully it'll, it'll be, um, relatively easy to, to figure out what's going on when you click on different variables. Um, so if we go to back to home, okay. So, uh, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail here for a limit. Um, so again, this is where you basically create a filter. Uh, we have some example filters here. Um, so well, let me see, let's do uh, uh, right-handed. Right 
uh, but you can you can go into here and you can modify the um, the 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 logic statement to pick out whatever you want. You can do um, multiple criteria. So you use like all right-handed emails or whatever. Uh, so here, here you can see we, but we're, we've started developing this out into the longitudinal structure. So here we have uh, um, 9,425 records um, that are um, right-handed, uh, 17,943 uh, that are not. Um, uh, so, uh, so, um, uh, this is the baseline data. So you can see that there's 9,425 people at baseline that were right-handed. Uh, you can look over here, you can see there's 2,450 people at baseline that were, um, left-handed. Uh, and then the, the reason why these records are over here in May is because we didn't collect handedness data at six months one year or 18 months. Uh, so, so again, uh, um, you need to be cognizant of the kind of the longitudinal structure of, of, of ABCD to, to understand kind of the, like why certain variables might be present or missing on a given record. And here, like, um, like for the longitudinal follow-up, uh, you know, we just collected the handedness data at baseline. So if we go back, uh, so you can, so you can basically, um, so just, uh, you know, a little bit more to you. If you you can basically modify this code however you want, save it, and then uh, and then uh, then it'll be available here as something that you can pull up, and that's also something you'll be able to reference uh, in in the analyze, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so so you can like limit the, the your analysis to a particular subject of subset of subjects that you're interested in looking at, um, and again extend. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Um, again, you can basically um, create new variables based on old variables, um, and uh, uh, and then use those in your analyses as well. Um, I think we have we have video tutorials for all of this. I can't get into too much detail because I'll probably run out of time. Um, so let me just go through and analyze quickly, and then then I'll end up my lecture. Um, so this is the last thing I'll cover. Uh, so, so this is the, um, uh, this is what I was showing in the slides. And so this is essentially uh, a regression analysis uh, that incorporates the design structure of ABCD in terms of the nesting and the design covariance. Uh, so just to um, point you to the ex expert mode, if you click here, it opened up the right side and you can edit the R and this is all the R code that's used to run the, the models. Um, so you can you can actually go in here and you can say here you can define new variables or, or change the code in different ways and run it. Um, there's also tutorial mode that I was talking about before. So if you click on tutorial mode, it opens up a uh, text that describes the, um, the, the models and then when the outputs are down here, after running it, it'll describe the outputs. Um, so you can take a look at that once if you want to. Um, and then, uh, and so, but let me go through how to how to run the model. So, uh, so we have the de the dependent variable of interest. If you click on it, it opens up a little a little box down here with a histogram, and uh, interactive way to um, to um, uh, perform transformations of the data. So, for example, if the data were skewed, you could do a log transformation. Uh, these data are pretty normal. We don't really need to. If there were some extreme observations, like really extreme observations, like there are sometimes with the fMRI beta weights, uh, you can sen you get sensor them. It sensors the top and the bottom um, half a percent of, of values. Um, it gives you a little summary. Uh, so you can do the same thing for the in the, the uh, independent, the, your primary independent variable of interest. Um, you can add more variables. I'll talk about in a second. Um, but this is the one that's shown in the plotting the plotting functions. And so here we have a few more transformations available. So, um, so we have, again, we have log. Um, you can add a polynomial transformation if you want. Uh, so you can run a polynomial model. Uh, you, again, you can censor. Uh, you also have the smooth transformation. And so, so again, uh, this is running with a GAM4 package. So it's a generalized additive mixed model. And so it allows for uh, data-driven smooths. And so if you if you if you think the the relationship's not linear, and you don't want to use a polynomial for whatever reason, you can you can use the smooth. I'll, I'll give a 
an example of that in a second. Um, okay, and then, uh, so, so I'll go through this in a little bit. Uh, this is for grouping, this is for interactions with the independent variable of interest. Now uh, you can add other independent variables. And this is where you select your subsets, say like females only or, or uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I'll just do all subjects for now. And again, these are, these are the design covariates for ABCD. Uh, so race, ethnicity, sex, uh, education, highest education of the, of the guardians, uh, household income, household marital status, age of the subject, and whether or not the subject is Hispanic. And so these are all kind of uh, highlighted in green. You can click them off if you don't include them in your model. Um, but again, we just encourage people to think about whether they, you should you know, think about which covariates you want to put in your model. And, and these are important ones that people tend to control for. Having said that, you know, every analysis, you should think through carefully about what you want to do your analysis. The random effects, um, families hard-coded, you can't click that off. Uh, I can't think of a good reason not to have control for family. Um, site, you can click off. Um, uh, if you do, uh, um, uh, the, the reason why is uh, devices, um, is, the, uh, is the MRI device. And so if you're doing an analysis that incorporates the imaging data in some way, like the tabulated uh, imaging data, um, you might want to control for a scanner instance as opposed to site. Uh, so again, there's 21 sites. Uh, roughly half the sites have one scanner and half the sites have two scanners. So you don't want to put site and device in at the same time because the, um, you know, they're, they're large, they can fund with each other. And so you can put one or the other in. You don't, you can't put both in. Uh, subject you put in, if it's a longitudinal measure, um, the, uh, it'll kind of detect if there's repeated measures. The, um, the depot will detect if there's repeated measures and it'll, it'll add in the random effect for you. Um, but or you can click on it uh, yourself. So I'll just put set in for now. Um, we'll just do a baseline analysis. So we'll do the uh, uh, kind of a, a dumb model. I don't, nobody would ever run this, but, um, but uh, just, just for an example. We have the NIH fluid component uh, uncorrected. Uh, uh, so this is a neurocognitive measure of fluid intelligence. And we're gonna use the, the, the picture vocabulary to predict that uh, controlling for these covariates. So I just click submit. Um, this typically takes, I don't know, roughly 10, 12 seconds to run. Hopefully that's what happens now. Um, okay, so 12 and a half seconds. This takes a couple seconds to render. Okay, here's the rendering. So here's the data displays. So this gives the histograms of the dependent variable and the independent variable of in, uh, primary independent variable of interest. Um, uh, it also gives a, a scatter plot of the data, along with a, a fit, the regression fit, uh, with 95% confidence intervals. Uh, each of these data points is pickable, so you can click on it and see the subject ID, uh, uh, here site, uh, sex, race, age, and then the value, values for the two, the independent and independent variable of interest. Um, so for example, if you have an extreme outlier, like this person here, you can kind of see who that is and like what, if there's any special characteristics about them. Um, so, and on the margin, we have the, the histograms on the margins. Uh, here's the, the R formula for the, for the fixed effects. And then here's the R for, formula for the random effects. Uh, next we have uh, kind of a table one. So, so this is just a, a, this is a summary table of the, of the variables that are going into your analysis. So we have uh, for continuous variables, we have the mean and the standard deviation. And then for categorical variables, we have the, 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 the uh, numbers in each cell and the percentage. Uh, and then with the population weights, we have another column, which is the population weighted versions of this. So by the time you get access to this, if you play around with deep, you'll see, you'll see another column here that's like basically weighting these back to the population of the United States, or at least to the American Community Survey. Um, the next is the effect size table. And we've quantified effect is um, the delta R squared, or the change in R squared. And so we, the, the model, when you click the button, it actually fit two models. It fit one model with the covariates only. So basically um, with, uh, with these guys and the random effects. And then I fit another model with those plus the independent variable of interest. 
uh, and then it computed the R square for each and took the difference. And so uh, if you do that, then the, 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 um, the, uh, the delta R square is uh, 0 0.05594, so roughly 5.6% 5, 5 of the variance uh, explained. Additional variance explained by putting in pick vocab into, on top of the covariates of no, of no interest. Um, so, so um, the next is an ANOVA table. This gives you the significance of the different terms in the model. Uh, and then a parameter table. This gives you the, uh, the, um, the, the estimates, the regression um, weights, the beta weights, and the standard errors, and the p-value for the, for the independent variables. Uh, here we just have the pick vocab. Right, which is of course highly significant. So, and then uh, the next set of plots are um, are diagnostic plots. So this is a, a a plot of the fitted values versus the residuals. Uh, this is something that should be flat. There should be no relationship. Uh, so that, that if it's a lowest curve, and you can see that there's a little bit of a curve here. So maybe I'll try a nonlinear fit next. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, there's like you know, I don't know how how worrisome that is, but it, but there's a little bit of departure from like a flat line here on the on both sides of both ends. Um, here's a plot. Here's histograms of the of the predicted random effects. So we have site on the left, and we have family on the right. And so as per usual, uh, family explains has a lot more uh, variance than the than the um, site. So uh, typically, like I said. It seems like family explains roughly 10 times the amount of variation that site does in most of the analysis that I've seen. And then the last plot is just the QQ, uh, QQ plot of the residuals. And it's if you know if it's a normal, if you're running a normal uh, model, uh, you'd expect the you'd hope the residuals to be normal, and so you'd you'd hope that the residuals follow kind of a, a straight line, like a, a right line on top of the dotted red line. Uh, so um, it's important to check your model assumptions. Uh, so we built that functionality in the deep. So now if I wanted to say maybe I was a little worried about this, uh, I don't know, this departure of the residuals from, uh, from, from linear fit, I might go here and I might click on smooth transformation and rerun the model. Let's see. Okay, it takes a little longer because it's a smooth, it's a little more computationally demanding. So that was 18 seconds. Let's see, a little, a little bit more time to render. There we go. So here you can see now that instead of a linear fit, we have a, a curvy linear fit. This was data, de data determined. Uh, if it's like a basis functions and smooths it automatically. Uh, I think it's B-spline, defaults to B-splines. Um, and so now if I go down here and look at the residual plot, you can see it's a, it's, it's, it's a bit flatter now, so maybe this conforms better. This is a, um, uh, the, the model here conforms better than the data than the first model. So I'm not sure if it, it, it would lead to substantively different conclusions, but you know, it's a better model. So, um, yeah, so just uh, uh, maybe uh, one other thing. So let me click off the smooth. Let me just uh, uh, make that linear again. Oh, by the way, uh, before I go on, uh, so this is uh, this kind of interacts directly with the uh, um, with the explore. So if I if I if I um, if I put the prefix in, it'll open up. It'll give me a bunch of options for. Um, you know, for uh, for variables, but if I if I wanted to kind of search from scratch, I could click on the plus here. It'll take me over here, and I can just kind of I can try to find uh, I don't know variables that uh, that I need to include in my analysis. And if I want to, I just you know click add, and it'll copy it over here. So let's see, this is something I could analyze. Probably not. So all right. I'll just put the old one back. Let's say NIHTBX. Oops, NIHTBX. Uh, eh, let's do crystallized. Let's do uncorrected. 
so now I'm, I'm predicting, uh, no, nobody would ever do this model. I'm predicting, uh, well, I don't know. So, so I'm predicting the fluid intelligence from uh, crystallized intelligence. I don't know if that's a good thing to do. So, um, all right, so maybe we wanna incorporate, like say, I don't know, let's say, uh, we wanna look and see if, uh, if the impact is moderated by sex, if the impact of, crist I don't know, if the relationship between crystallized intelligence uh, uh, it's a uh, relationship with food intelligence is has an interaction with sex. So if I click submit, it'll now um, incorporate that interaction, and it'll show it in the plots and the results. So here we go. So now we see that the uh, the uh, regression line is two regression lines, one for females, one for males. Uh, males, females. Okay. So um, so here we can see now that the uh, the ANOVA table has uh, both a main effect for um, crystallized, well, and a main effect for sex and uh, interaction between crystallized sex, this is not even close to significant for either one. So, and you can kind of see that in the regression plot, they're pretty much right on top of each other. So, uh, on here, the, the, the dots are colored according to female or male and so on and so forth. So, um, so you can do this pretty much with any kind of categorical variable for the, um, for the, for this, uh, plotting variables. Now, if you want to add another variables, you can. You know, there's 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 no limit to the number of variables or the or the interactions that you incorporate. So, if I wanted to put, I don't know, DMI, um, I don't know, star sex. If you wanted to do uh, an interaction between BMI and sex, again, I'm just this is not the model anybody would actually run. I'm just this is just for an example. Um, let's click that. Let's get rid of this one. Um, let's just uh, run. Let's see if I run this. What happens? And you can you can also do like smooth smooths of these variables or polynomial transformations or log or whatever. Uh, so okay. All right, so now the results have uh, uh, have the BMI, which is significant, probably dictate. Not very though. I mean, if you have what uh, twelve thousand kids, uh, p value point zero three eight is not that impressive. So, and the and then the interaction is nothing. So, anyway, so there's you can you can you know do more complex regression models if you want to. Um, now, um, the last thing I'll do is uh, show you how to kind of save your results and download them. So if you click on this little hamburger menu here, it opens up a little interactive screen. Um, you can save your model for later and you can share it. Um, okay, I need to give it a name and then save it. And you can also click on download this button here and this will uh, put together a little package uh, that you can download that has all of the R code, uh, all of the plots, all the model outputs um, uh, and all the data that went into your analysis. And you can take that uh, and, and work on it locally. Uh, I'm not gonna go through to the end here. But, so. Sorry. So, uh, so, so you can, um, uh, so you can, you can download everything and work on it locally. Uh, so, uh, so the, and then the idea may be that, um, well, you can get your analysis started in deep. Um, and then, uh, if you want to do something more complex, it's not so easy to work directly in deep, you know, or some other analysis, you can just download everything and use that as the basis to start doing other analyses or, or extending it or you know or sharing it with other others that for which you share a signed data use contract that you're allowed to share, share you know like uh, uh, at least code with right so um all right so i'm gonna stop here um uh i 
think if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, my email is at the start, wkthompson at health.ucsd.edu. Uh, I'll be happy to put you in touch with anybody if I can't answer your questions. And I uh, um, and, uh, hope you have a, a, a good experience if you use Deep. And let us know what you think if you, if you do use it. And uh, if you have any ideas for extending it or improving it in different ways, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, best of luck and uh, um, happy analyzing.